Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, and today is going to be a second episode. Yes, indeed, I've reached 1,700 sc- subscribers. Today isn't that marvelous, wonderful, exciting, delightful? Yes, indeed. So we're going to have an extra game today. It's going to be a one versus one in daytime. So why? Yes, indeed, during the day. We shall be seeing two forces clash for dominance in some more. Who shall be doing it? Which shall be, for heaven's sake, don't shoot! A request which never really seems to be granted or followed. Opposing him shall be Barton PL fighting for the Wehrmacht and Mr. Don't shoot shall be fighting for the second armor division. Mr. Barton shall be fighting for the 17th SS Panzergrenadier Division. And let's get right down to it. I also sort of switched about with my skins a bit. For the Wehrmacht, so they're back to half tracks, partly though because I sort of wanted to try out some Grenadier skins, which it sort of put up, but they didn't quite seem to be what I was looking for. So, of course, I had to shift it back, and trouble is going back to the other one would have required a much longer process. So, I just said, sort that, and let's go over to half tracks, although again, I might switch again. But of course, I'll be trying to sort of, you know, get the skins up either way, and of course, I'll still be keeping the new Panzerlite skins. So, quick details on there. Sort of, what do we see? We see a four engineer start, so we're going to see four engineer start from Don't Shoot. Been a bit of a while since we've seen that, I believe. Barton Peel with a three pioneer start, on the other hand. Quite interesting. Both sides emphasizing getting a lot of territory early on. Of course, question is who will gain the greatest advantage under this. Only time will tell, but wiring off the fuel point, nice to see, nice to see. Of course, with four years, that might do less good, because they can much more easily be wired off. The ammo court is up, probably something on the way. The what, I cannot say. Could be an MG, could it be a full scan? Yeah, although, again, considering the amount of resources been spent on pioneers, I suppose some an MG would be the more sensible thing to expect. Pa- engineers heading towards the center, towards the north, towards the south, and setting up barracks, well, a bit. Anticlimactic. But so far, not a lot going on. And of course, a wonderful thanks to all of my subscribers, all of my fans. Couldn't do it without you. Certainly couldn't also do it without Relic for anything made this wondrous game. For which we spend so many hours, or at least I spend a lot of hours. Plus, I've also a quick note I'm getting actually a lot of replays. I mean, don't be sad or disappointed if I don't cast the game again. I'm getting a lot, and several of them are good ones. But again, chances are I'm probably forgetting something because, again, getting a lot of replays. First you know, and no, it was a full scan air team, and yes, need back to half tax, which does bring some different sorts of variety. Moving out for the fatherland. Pioneers following up. Going to be a bit delayed for infantry for don't shoot. Full scan is advancing up for the fatherland. Engineers moving up, of course, cutting the wire, no problem for them. Although the pioneers might have a bit of a say about that. They've spent the time putting up the wire, they don't want it cut. Folks going to staying up in the cemetery. Could be, you know, first. Yeah, there we go. Wiring off, so rifleman can't run up to the cover. Engineers Duel between engineers and pioneers. I think the engineers will be winning this one. Actually, pioneers not looking too well in this fight. Wiring off all the cover, in fact, before actually taking any territory. And there we go. Rifleman now advancing on the folks guns. Folks guns will have to get into cover quickly, and of course, this will be an excellent time for the Americans to advance up on the folks guns. And already one full scan here bites the dust. Quite unfortunate. Not the squad leader though by the looks of things, but there we go. Pioneers rushing in to assist. Firing in with their MP40s. Quickly the rifle are dropping though much more swiftly as fire is turning against them. There we go. Small victory for the Wehrmacht, although the full scan themselves took some heavy losses. Brick in the south, though, as engineers keep pushing at all angles, taking points wherever they can. MG42 moving in for Barton PL. Oh, goody, goody. And the pioneers continue finishing the wiring work while the full scans are actually moving in to hunt down the engineers, it looks like. More rifle on the way for don't shoot, but again, this sort of four engineer start is usually used by more experienced players to generally just get a lot of territory early on, of course, also thus getting a lot of engineers. We can then upgrade with flamethrowers and then really pull up some nasty assaults from a lot of angles. It can be very difficult to fight against. Falskan is moving northwards to stop here, so that's two Falskan on MG and 
Some pioneers, and there we go. American units flanking to the MG fire, getting suppressed. At least partially. Oh, the pioneer team was lost for Barton. Nicht gut, mein Herr. Nicht gut. And there we go. First flame for already taking up position in the church. Although might want to be careful. Don't want the church tapestry to catch on fire. God might get a bit upset. Just a bit. Continuing fire here. Looks like the engineers might be trying to flank through here. No, yes, no. Ops for a longer flank, perhaps. A much longer one with using some riflemen. Not a bad. No, he just goes for the territory, I suppose, giving up the pressure that way. Riflemen, though, taking heavy losses, although the Fulton has an MG gun, is actually taking some losses themselves. Goodness gracious. Another MG coming out for Barton PL, so two false grenades, two MGs so far, and three pioneers. Weapons, I mean, supply out going up for Don't Shoot. And going off for some cutoff points right here. Currently not really looking good for the Wehrmacht. Cursing and gnashing of teeth. And advancing up where they can, slowly but surely. And in yes, getting ready to harass this point again. Running into the church, but getting suppressed right before that <coughs> happens. Oh, damn it, hiccups! <laughs> More hiccups. <coughs> oh dear. <laughs> I just don't seem to have any luck with me. Engineers with flame first moving up. Lots of forces being focused in the center. Others setting up here for flank, but MG trying to at least cover that angle. Right from the church holding out so far quite nicely. Might be an idea for the pioneers to lay down some Samax for the MG gunner so they won't be quite as exposed. That would at least be an idea. More false gunners out for Barton PL, so three false gunners, two MG teams. Going back against those engineers right then. The fuel point trying to protect it. Will they succeed or will the engineers be able to render it neutral? And there we go. Run away again. More barbed wire going up for the Wehrmacht. Barton Peel having some deal with a barbed wire company, I imagine. Cake bags going up. That's probably going to be a very nice thing, seeing as you know, don't shoot is rather rushing towards an armored car. Of course, it might even be a bit delayed, that anti-tank gun. This, of course, could go quite nastily against Mr. Parson PL. And more rifles sneaking up everywhere. Flame for engineers. Fultz is taking heavy losses. MG slightly pulled back. Fultz going need to get to the front line. And a mine here, though. Barton PL sensing it. Yes, his opponent might go for an arm and come across us in. Thus, he mines this entrance. Not a bad idea. Kampfkraft Center. No, Krieg bags up. Not the Kampfkraft Center. MG getting flanked. And forced away. And a small retreat right here for Barton PL. Fultz is though, getting equipped with MP forces, increasing their firepower at the short and medium ranges. And the rifle running right into them. But running away right before it. And thus the push of Barton Peel continues to counter attack. The 17th SS cannot be seen to lose. Although, again, mind you, MP40 Fultz Gun is a much, much more accurate when they're actually standing still. Vital little thing to remember. And no, he's actually getting a half track. How odd. How very, very odd. And now the armor car is arriving, getting fully upgraded. The Greyhound senses its prey and moves out, while the half track for some reason just moves up without support. Or at least the support is some way away. Germans are seizing territory from Nothing there though, and there we go, the armored car moving in, crashing the barbed wire most swiftly. But it looks like it could be going in towards the base, could be hitting the mine, or might be trying to flank about, hitting the forces of Barton PO in the rear. Mines though going down by the pioneers just in the nick of time. Oh dear, the, the, oh, the mines weren't finished. 
Oh no, that could have been excellent though. Still not pack on the way. Only folks going into the Panzer fast to try and stop this. Wretched Hellhound. Will they succeed? Apparently not, they're making a run for it. And some pioneers taking some time by the beach. Having nothing to do with it, there's some flamethrowers standing about nearby. MP40 folks now is fighting a heroic fight down by the south. MP40 is against lots of engineers and riflemen. Will the folks can here win or will no? The riflemen won. Might be a pack on the way now. And again, going for the fuel point, really aggressive harassment from Don't Shoot. Bye, bye, bye. Quite extreme, actually. And one can note these sort of problems that Barton Peel is having, sort of holding as much territory as possible and actually doing enough damage to Don't Shoot. Let's go look, have a look at him. No doctrine as of yet. No veteran as of yet, despite actually having a Kampfkopf Center now. Half-track moving up, M8 moving towards the center, still no Panzerfaust from the Volkskrandiers. But the pack is ready. Volkskrandiers running back towards the half-track for reinforcement. Volkskrandiers advancing under the cover of the MG. Pack moving up. Volkskrandiers taking heavy losses, of course, as they're standing out in the open trying to take a point. Might have been an idea for them to, you know, lay down some sandbags first at least. BAR's now up for don't shoot, really increasing the firepower of his infantry teams. Another pack on the way for don't in Barton PL. Clearly not wanting to be caught off guard by an M8 in the north as well perhaps. Jumping both full scanner kind of teams into the half track. Not entirely sure why it does that. No medic bunker either. I mean, he does have a lot of infantry. I mean, a medic bunker might have been an idea for him. He seems to be of another opinion. And there we go, though. M8 rushing into water north. Right into the line of fire of the pack. First shot knocks it down to less than half health. Oh dear, one more shot and the M8 could be going down. Yes, indeed. M8 is out of control. Hack scores a kill for the fatherland. And a push towards the centre again. Part Barton PL does not give up. And of course, Rafa with BRs quickly put a stop to that. Very quickly, in fact. Flame Front is now rising in as well. Quite a few. Half track though has been manned. And this building getting hammered by the pack could be close to collapsing if those rifemen are not careful. They need to get out. There we go. Otherwise, if the building collapses with them in it, they will die. MG moving up. Veterans on the way for infantry and like support units. Heavy fighting breaking out. Fultz going to sing up this in the ditches. Wondering why they couldn't be in some nice and dry place. At least with some sandbags. Pack now decides to fire away at something else. No, it continues to just destroy the building right there. MG moving up, but oh, right into front of riflemen. Being hunted by engineers. Oh, dear Barton PL lost an MG. Fultzka is rushing in, but getting hit by grenades. Don't shoot now, having pineapple grenades. Oh, dear. The pressure just keeps increasing, and Barton PL with that MG loss is really in a lot of trouble. He's going to need some more infantry, I think, or something else. And now looks like an utter collapse from the center. With that MG gone, he's in a lot of trouble. We have 300 points left. And once more, the victory is in the hands of the Americans, by the looks of things. Doesn't quite like look like Barton has a plan, does he? But he's not giving up, taking up the pack in a good position to cover the troops as they advance in case of another M8. But then again, lots of infantry upgrades, so he's probably not going for anything right away. 
medic pack on the troop, but again, no cover, and they're standing out in the open versus troops in heavy cover with automatic weapons. At least he should have laid down some sandbags, but there we go. And looks like, is that a medic station or something? Nope, that was something else from farther in the background. Half track moves in. More false guys moving in. Blitzkrieg has been chosen. Stormtrooper was quickly called in. That could, in fact, do some work. But apparently, that's not what Barton PL has in mind. Moving in the Pioneers and the North, things are really looking bad for him, in fact. Rather pinned in. False guys fighting for their lives in the ditches. Being drained of victory of points. Flamethrower engineers getting run into a small house by MP40 quick false grenades. Moving into the center, come on, Barton. Four vets. And the mines, we was actually doing some good, actually spotting some mines. Excellent. More mines, but don't shoot, he does seem to be good. Getting around to actually doing some mining by now, and that's lovely to see. Although still not a lot, and Barton PL swords are a bit exposed again, his flanks are. And the MG simply left there to deal with any rifleman trying to harass that fuel point, or engineers for that sake. And of course, veterans who won MG42s actually gain a bit of veterancy. I mean, accuracy when they fire their guns, they're actually going to do more damage with veterans who won, and that's usually a good thing. Engineers being pushed out could be forced to run past those MP44 guns, but again, remember, stand still, stand still, and there we go. Engineers could be lost. Yes, indeed, don't shoot, finally lost a unit. Other considering they weren't their only engineers, I suppose the loss weren't that great. Tank Depot now up, really pushing the advantage, going for the Tank Depot. Things still not looking too great for Barton PL. We have points. <laughs> False Canadian is under heavy fire and there's no support for them at all. Oh, the inhumanity. Our base is under attack. Except they've gained veterans too, and more trust actually arrived. They arrived and running into heavy MG fires. They're trying to sort of rush in, perhaps. There's a small spot here where you can actually actually run into the Valmark base right here in the north. Tricky that MG. No, pack gets cleared out. Oh dear. Mine set off. Stu 42 actually arrives, and the Americans rush into the Valmark base. Oh dear. And they do set off the mine. BAR lost, but the last man makes it out of there again. Quite some damage done there to Barton PL. And again, a medic banker would have helped him immensely, I think. I do mean immensely, but now he still have a mortar to support things in the center. Make it a bit harder for the American to dig in the church or anywhere else. Mine went off. Flame for engineers just rushing in towards the north of the Wehrmacht position. Pioneers pick up the BAR. I think some false guys might have done more with it. Let's do 42. Not really amounting to much. And there we go. First armored unit out for the second armored division. A Sherman tank has arrived, and there's not really much Barton has. They can stop it except those packs. So he's actually in a bit of trouble, I think. Was and of course don't shoot has the sticky bombs he's already got most of the other upgrades so why not sticky bombs and no supply upgrades though that's quite interesting pioneers getting killed the BAR immediately lost Sherman arriving at the center pack nowhere to assist the other one hasn't been recruited either more pioneers on the way to replace the ones lost. The 17th SS rather being ground down in a heavy fighting. Hey, 
And in the south, Fort's going to seek heavy losses. Quite interestingly, though, he has veterans, infantry veterans too, but he doesn't really have any units that really get the advantage from him. You know, stuff like stormtroopers or grenadiers, which does strike me as a bit odd. Though it's not like Fort's guns don't get any benefits at all. So, I mean, in that sense, it's good, but you know, some grenadiers or stormtroopers would really have gotten a great benefit out of it, I think. Pack recruit. Sherman moves up though, coming out of fire for another pack. And engineers taking the central victory point. American force begins through the south, but they're not really launching an attack though. Stu in dire need repairs. And the pioneers arrive to do so. Excellent. But time for a mid-game analysis, and actually note, don't shoot has gone for armor. So he's really hoping to get the advantage out of all the armor has, and looking at the things, he's probably going for the right-hand side, he's going for Calibis, and really just blasting bars and PLN into submission. I mean, currently though, looking pretty good for him, the four engineer star has really you know, succeeded in getting him the advantage, and Bart and PL just couldn't really you know, get the kills or get the sort of great positions, and losing that MG down there a bit earlier didn't help at all. Plus, of course, the constant harassment right here has been quite the issue for Barton. But, of course, I mean, there's not really much else for Don't Shoot to really do. He's getting the supplied upgrades, he's got Sherman, so he might want to get a medic station. And I suppose, get a Calliope or a Pershing on the other hand. The, of course, greater problem is for Barton PL. I'd recommend getting a Sturm Army, getting a Stu, perhaps getting a... Armored car and perhaps a neighbor over and then really try to push that way. He should not be sort of trying to stick about with another Stu 42. He shouldn't be relying solely on the packs to really deal with those Germans, I fear. But really, a Sturm Armory would do him great. Either way, let's return to the fight. Engineers getting mortared and flame for engineers moving from North Falls, they are quick there to stop them. And the mortars right at the side where the flame for engineers actually can't do a thing towards them. That's not really a problem. Engineers actually end up getting forced out just as the MP40 volts guns arrive. Going to be a problem there. And once more the rifle move in and once more the MG is ready to punish the invaders. Except it just had to reload in that case. Which is also something that Veterans 1 helps with. It actually makes them reload faster and he does go for a second Stu 42. I really don't think a Stu 42 is what he needs now, of course, that he knows there's armor. Of course, now tank destroyers are arriving. He needs something that can actually deal with the Sherman. The Tank disorders and whatever, and sadly, Stu 42s just can't do that. And that could really be the res what leads to Barton PL's demise if he's not careful. I would have recommended again Sturm Armory and getting an actual Stug, or perhaps getting some Storms and cranking them with Panzer Tricks, something like that. Not getting another Stu 42 at this stage. Of course, now the tank destroyer arrives. Su 42 opens up and does a bit of damage. No veterans for the armor, though. No attempt at panzer fasting yet either. Pack will have to turn about and do something. At least part and PLS managed some sort of stabilization of the situation. But he needs something more. Full screen has held up in the church but simply getting gunned down. They can't really respond because again the most of the windows there don't do much, but the mortar does. The mortar doesn't do quite some horrible damage to the riflemen. M10 getting hammered by the pack. And goes out of control, thus scoring a small victory right there for Barton PL. 
And the Sherman moves in towards the north, coming right into the fire of the pack. Opens up on the... No, it only focuses on the MG, just opening up the way for engineers to move in. Death nothing to really assist the pack. Enemy unit down. Oh dear, the false gun is all forgotten about. Allied war machine going up, and he's just sending in the Sherman to clear out the MG. But to no avail, and literally enough, Barton has not salvaged that armored car previously, which was wrecked. And I totally not recommend getting that sandwich, but now Calliope does arrive for the second armored division, alongside a fresh new Sherman. The armor push of the second shall continue. And these two 42s have just taken a beating. And again, there's nothing really to really push. There's no stooks. No stooks whatsoever. Which again, I can't really help but feel is a major issue. And the Calliope didn't really serve in Normandy. Mind you, that was something like the a sort of stew variant of the Sherman with 105mm howitzer, but that was about it. The Calliope only came much later in the war. But there we go, Calliope Barrage being launched right into the church, mostly, and defenses of the Krauts. Knocking out the pack, which is really going to be a huge blow to Barton P.O. And as of course you can quickly recruit it. But the Riven already on the move and looks like they could be taking it. Another false Canadian team down. Oh dear, Barton PL is suddenly taking huge losses. And the mortar. Oh no, and the Stu 42s are nowhere to help. And don't shoot trying to steal the mortar, but the Stu 42 takes care of that at the very least. Barton is in a lot of trouble. Half tech getting stickied. Stormtroopers now arrived to sort of try and get him out of this utter mess. Not really looking good at all. Although he did manage to sort of stabilize things. They turned against him again because again I don't re I really think that issue was the second Stu 42 not getting something more mobile to deal with this Sherman which he by the time he got the two seconds Stu 42 and before that knew was there but Stormtroopers now arriving will he be getting Panzerex moving up the second pack that's leaving the north open to any armored assaults Rifeman <laughs> Don't actually take any damage as 2 242 simply hammer the building. Another Calliope barrage. Not really managing much except damage the shed a bit. Although it looks like Samoa is slowly but surely getting leveled. Engineers going in once more for the fuel point. Again, no attempt at solving these two things. I also believe this is actually a league game, so again, pretty good players in action. And Storms was with assault rifles, no attempt at a Panzer Schreck. But the riflemen probably will be losing, yes indeed. No, they managed actually to suppress the Storm Troopers, sending them away. More to rounds so fall, and a Stu 42 shell managed to knock out all but one rifleman. But again, they lack the real assets to knock out those Germans, those tank destroyers. I have no idea what sort of made Barton go for the second Stu 42. I'll blow them to pieces! But a Sturmbannführer! It can't hurt him! Silence! I shall have you sent to the Eastern Front! That's really the only way I can imagine it. And he's still not getting a Sturm Armory, he's still not really getting anything that could deal with it. And he's getting another pack, that's not really encouraging. And he hasn't even salvaged that either. Come on, Barton. Salvage something. 
including your Anna. We are losing a victory point. And another Kalipi Barash. Another pack, in fact, yes, indeed. American seized pack or AT gun, I suppose, pulling up as well to the front. And we're seeing another tank strike coming out for, for heaven's sake, don't shoot! Not really looking encouraging for him though. Not by a long shot. I mean, Barton Peel though. The center has once more been lost, and because again, he doesn't really have any sort of units that can push an assault. He's in a bit of a trouble. And still no panic, just dual M sub assault rifle upgrades. And now the building gets leveled. Rifle and charge at the false guns with the MP40s, except the false guns keep moving. Stu 42 firing away. Who shall win this fight? Looks like the rifle has to in fact gain veteran C2 at the same time. And begins suppressing the false gun deers. And having most of his armors actually repaired, he's getting ready to push another attack against Barton. Bunker going up in the center, he's probably setting up an MG bunker, not a medic bunker though. Again, a medic bunker much earlier would have helped him immensely, I think. Immensely. Bundle grenades sorts out the pack crew. And there we go, charging in. Enemy unit down. Pioneers down. Stormtroopers. Oh, down. Pack fires. And I think, though, in this case, it's a bit too late, but of course, there's a stake in the one. But the other one is exposed. It's alone. Oh, no, the crew is not to be saved. Now, the war machine just goes up. Nurse allowing. Don't shoot, you just absorb the losses without much worry. Oh, the inhumanity. Of course, the pack gets cleared out. Machine gun bank is up. But to what a whale. And the M10 bites it does, but of course, those are easily replaced. And this M10 tries to deal with the Stu 42, but the Stu could win this since the M10 is greatly damaged. The Ravner moving in. Destroyed engine. And now the Ravner can get close. This could actually end up being the end for the Stu 42 with a sticky bomb. Stu 42 does get the tank destroyed by the Kalibri Rise plus sticky bombs. Oh dear, heavy damage, and there's no pioneers. A few remaining false guys and a mortar team, and an tiger has been called in to turn the tides. But will it be enough? I'm not entirely sure of that. And now with two Calliopes, it's going to get pretty dangerous. Stu 42 gets knocked out. Half deck could also go down. And victory pots being taken away. Pioneers moving in. MG still coming here. And the MG bunker, so faithfully placed to protect the central victory point, is going to get knocked out because there's nothing to really support it against the armor. Thus forcing the tiger. No, it decides to just steal some riflemen down there. Barton, Barton, Barton. Looks like the cafe is almost down as well. It's not really going to be much to move into once this town is liberated. If you can call it liberated. And a pack is going to get lost as well. And again, high lack of infantry from Barton. Makes this a bit difficult to actually do anything with. Tank moves up silently. Oh, well, as silently as a tiger tank can creep up. 
Folks gonna small to move in. And some grenadiers actually have been summoned onto the field now. And they're using assault. Well this oh dear can I be rushed right into the rear of the tiger? Though the Tiger Man has dodged most, but this again is not a good situation. Riflemen getting assaulted and are finally being retreated. Another tank destroyer arriving. Quite a bit of armor. No panzer check on the grenadiers. And Tiger once more rushing back and forth again, limiting the sort of effectiveness of it. As the victory points are continuing to drain for Barton PL. Pack does get recruited. Half track continues to serve out reinforcements. More grenadiers arriving, but will it be enough? And for this to work for Barton, he actually needs to sort of launch an attack on those calipers. He needs to push them back with Panzer Shrek, I think, and perhaps using that pack as well. He probably could do something. But on the other hand, if he just basically waits to take the blow, he's probably going to lose. Actually, it's time to look at Barton PL. Sherman taking fire, right from advancing, right in front of the Tiger. Oh, and the Tiger misses. MG is finally pulled away from the north to protect the victory point down there. There we go, Kalaip, he's rend the center. Grandiers have not been equipped with panzer effects at all. And he has the munitions for it. Oh, Barton PL, what went wrong? And now the tiger gets swarmed, and there's nothing to really protect it or assist it. And the tiger goes down. And this is pretty much it. Half track is pretty much gone. Granius beyond help. And there we go. GG. Game over. And that was the second episode right there to sort of celebrate the 1700 subscribers. Again, a big great thank you. And of course, what can we learn from this? Well, you know, if you see a Sherman, don't get a second Stu 42. Get a Stu or get something else and actually handle the Sherman. And of course, you know, that sort of weighed up to take a lot of beatings from Calibis, you know, trying to push, be aggressive. I think that was one of the major problems with Barton PL. He was simply too passive in the face of Don't Shoot's rather aggressive behavior. And that actually sort of allowed Don't Shoot to dictate things more and more, which clearly wasn't in the favor of Barton PL. Plus, the lack of Medic Bunker definitely did not help him. And he really should have gotten at least a few Pantrex. Early and of course some more infantry. So really that's sort of the major problems I think with Barton PL. Much too much reaction, not enough action. But there you go. I do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe or tell your friends? And if you didn't, well why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.